Artificial intelligence just revolutionized science, but the key turning point that I want to talk about today was actually decades in the making. But before we get into exactly how AI is changing drug development, environmental simulation, and genome sequencing, we need to look at how we got here. In 2011, Mark Andreessen, the creator of the Netscape web browser and a prominent tech investor, wrote a long article in the Wall Street Journal. At the time, the stock market was in turmoil, and no one quite knew what to make of all these new tech companies that were going public. Lots of people were claiming it was a massive bubble, just like the dot-com era 10 years prior. But Andreessen saw things differently. He argued that software is eating the world, and soon every industry would be transformed or disrupted by technology. His thesis was strong. After all, two decades had passed since the rise of the modern internet, and there were now over two billion people with broadband access. Perhaps more importantly though, the cost of starting a new technology company had fallen by orders of magnitude. A basic internet application that cost $150,000 per month to maintain in the year 2000 could now be deployed to Amazon Web Services for just $1,500 a month. Everywhere Andreessen looked, software was taking over. Amazon had revolutionized book selling. Netflix had decimated Blockbuster. And even Disney had gone through a major technological revolution through the purchase of Pixar, which was, at its heart, a software company pioneering advanced computer graphics. Andreessen predicted that this trend would continue, and soon, even asset-heavy industries like national defense and energy production would be taking full advantage of software. Well, it's been 10 years since Andreessen's prediction, and it looks remarkably accurate in hindsight. Nearly every new high-growth company is somehow tied to software innovation. Even though software has been a powerful force for revolutionizing old industries, many scientific fields were left largely untouched. That is, until recently. Two major developments in computing are working together to unlock incredible possibilities in science. First, raw computing power has increased so much that previously intractable problems can now be solved using algorithms. And second, new deep learning neural networks are uniquely powerful in scientific domains. Taken together, we finally have the ability to build artificial intelligence systems capable of having an impact on science. So where are we seeing the most progress? We can answer that question by going back to the 1950s and looking at the early work of biologists. In 1953, Watson and Crick published a paper describing the DNA double helix that twists to form the ladder-like structure we think of today. As soon as we could visualize DNA, we wanted to understand it at a deeper level. The goal was always to figure out the linkage between particular snippets of genetic code and the cellular parts and processes that result from that code. While there's been incredible progress in both sequencing DNA and understanding the genome over the past 70 years, we've always fallen just short of comprehending the complete picture. Using just the DNA or RNA source code, biologists wanted to be able to accurately and efficiently predict the three-dimensional shape of an unknown protein. This is because we know that structure and function are directly related in biology. The shape of a protein drives what role it will play inside of a cell. For example, membrane receptors are often cylindrical with hollow middles so they can connect properly. Makes sense. But even though all DNA is made up of just four simple bases, human DNA can code for upwards of 20,000 different proteins. If scientists could unlock the ability to predict protein structure from DNA sequences, it would allow them to better understand human disease and even potentially design custom proteins to fight a wide range of illnesses. The last 70 years have only yielded small gains in this area though, and scientists had to rely on slow computational methods and occasionally even raw intuition in order to decipher protein structures. This was particularly frustrating because scientists had already solved the translation between DNA sequences and the amino acids that form the building blocks of proteins. The problem was actually folding these amino acids up into their final structures, which would reveal their true function. And so the protein folding problem was born and it confounded biologists for decades. That was until a team of artificial intelligence researchers came along and changed everything. DeepMind was founded in September of 2010, only a few months before Mark Andreessen would post his now famous Software is Eating the World article in the Wall Street Journal. While everyone else in tech was focused on just building products that they could put immediately in consumers' hands and start generating profits, the DeepMind team was much more methodical. They focused on quietly developing cutting-edge AI for years before they were acquired by Google in 2014. Even after the Google buyout, it was unclear if DeepMind was going to release a commercial product anytime soon. They seemed more focused on making headlines by mastering a wide variety of games. First, they beat the world champion Go player Lee Sedol, and then a few years later, they reached Grandmaster level in StarCraft II. 
But the learnings from these games would wind up translating remarkably well to other domains, and the protein folding problem was an obvious target for DeepMind's technology. So in 2020, the team announced that their algorithm called AlphaFold had solved the protein folding problem once and for all. The news was met with a mix of excitement and skepticism at first. If AlphaFold worked well, it could definitely save scientists a lot of time and money in the lab. But it seemed odd that a company focused on playing video games could have real impact in the biology community. Fortunately, there was already a gold standard competition in place for assessing various protein folding approaches. And if AlphaFold could win the competition, the case would be closed and the skeptics would have to give them the credit they'd earned. By the time the competition rolled around, AlphaFold was unstoppable. The DeepMind team crushed the competition and wound up posting scores that predicted the final shape of proteins within the width of a single atom. But academic competitions can still have limited real-world use sometimes, so DeepMind needed to put AlphaFold to the test in the wild. They found the perfect opportunity while researching the novel coronavirus. Using AlphaFold, the team was able to correctly predict the exact shape of the SARS-CoV-2 spike protein, which ultimately went on to be targeted by vaccines. It was an incredible milestone in the application of artificial intelligence in biology, and it made it clear that software was starting to eat the scientific world as well. The accolades began rolling in. An open source version of AlphaFold was named Method of the Year by Science Magazine, and the editor-in-chief said, the breakthrough in protein folding is one of the greatest ever in terms of both the scientific achievement and the enabling of future research. DeepMind had won the game and solved the protein folding problem. It was a massive achievement, and it validated decades of hard work in artificial intelligence research. But at the same time, protein folding was just one small piece of the puzzle when it came to scientific research. So it was time for the AI community to expand their ambitions. We're now at a major turning point for applied artificial intelligence. The technology is finally in a mature state, and enterprising teams of programmers and scientists are starting to tackle some of the hardest problems in the world, with extremely promising results. Recently, an article in an artificial intelligence magazine called The Gradient outlined four key areas in which artificial intelligence is having a profound impact on science. So let's go through them one at a time. As we've seen over the past few years, artificial intelligence thrives on massive datasets. Projects like OpenAI's GPT-3 use huge troves of text data to answer questions, translate text, and even write computer code. We're very fortunate that AI is at its best in precisely the arenas where humans struggle the most. It's impossible for any single human to read through every scientific journal that gets published, but that's a perfect problem for applied AI. As an example, let's look again at COVID-19 research. Throughout the pandemic, nearly 200,000 articles were published in scientific journals relating to the virus. Reading through all of these papers to try and glean insights would be impossible for anyone, let alone a busy researcher who's actively contributing to the fight. But AI can quickly read through all of the available scientific literature and create an underlying model for the fundamental rules, data, and principles that together build up a body of knowledge around a particular area of science. And this doesn't need to be restricted to any particular area. There are millions of valuable scientific papers out there with hidden insights that would be useful if they could just be surfaced at the right moment in time. While it's pretty obvious to imagine a medical database that could deliver better results than Google or WebMD, the real applications here will likely be far more technical. For example, there's a company called Insilico that used AI to design a new drug to fight a disease called idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis, or IPF. What's interesting about Insilico's approach here is that not only did they use an algorithm to design the drug itself, they also used an algorithm to pick the disease that they wanted to cure. The in silico team turned their AI loose on reams of medical literature, which allowed them to find potential proteins, cells, and pathogens that they wanted to work on. There are still skeptics that believe this approach won't work. And to be fair, in silico's drug is still only in phase one clinical trials and has a ways to go before making an impact. But if the approach works, it could speed up the drug development process significantly. The benefits of AI are rarely restricted to fully replacing a human-operated process, though. Often AI just helps humans make better decisions faster, and that's where area number two comes in. Over the past few decades, scientific instruments have become vastly more precise. Once again, scientists are saddled with the burden of too much data to process, and that's where AI proves extremely helpful. More than 100 years ago, all the way back in 1916, Albert Einstein theorized that gravitational waves could be a natural outcome of his general theory of relativity. 
These ripples in the space-time continuum were purely theoretical, at least until a group of scientists at the Argonne National Laboratory developed an algorithm that could process a month's worth of data in just seven minutes. The craziest part of all of this was that instead of highly specialized equipment, these algorithms could run on standard GPUs. This is a great demonstration of how AI methods are becoming easier to integrate into the natural workflow of scientists, which speeds up research significantly. But even specialized scientific equipment is now benefiting from AI upgrades. And this is our third key area of impact. Electron microscopes allow scientists to investigate the natural world at a much smaller scale. Instead of relying on visible light passing through lenses like a normal microscope, electron microscopes use electrons to generate images at higher resolution with more detail. The problem is that data generated by these electron microscopes can be noisy and hard to interpret. And that's where AI comes in. By recording additional data about a sample's physical and chemical properties, and then passing that data to an AI system, researchers have been able to increase the power and accuracy of their instruments. These basic scientific tools are critical to efficient research efforts. And it's not just electron microscopes that are getting an AI-powered upgrade. DNA sequencers, which are critical to nearly all biological research in the genomic era, have also been improved with AI. Recently, a team of scientists used AI to cut the time it takes to sequence DNA in half, and they're aiming to cut it in half again soon. Anytime it takes less time or money to try something, you're going to see more innovation, and that's exciting. Those small scale improvements are important, but AI is also unlocking new capabilities on the opposite end of the spectrum. The fourth key area is broadly called complex simulation, and it's quickly becoming a standard tool in basic science research. As we've seen time and time again, deep neural networks are capable of solving a remarkably broad set of problems. GPT-3 can answer questions, write code, and do translation all at the same time. DeepMind's Gato can do everything from playing Atari games to stacking blocks with a real robot arm, all from the same neural network. And now, this versatility is being applied to scientific modeling. The network is called Dense, and it was designed by research to build simulations in 10 different scientific fields, from physics and astronomy to geology and climate science. One single deep neural network was able to build 10 separate emulators and maintain accuracy while performing calculations up to a billion times faster. The really key breakthrough here though, is that these models are particularly good at solving inverse problems, where a researcher wants to figure out what variables might lead to a given output. Instead of randomly tweaking parameters in a massive model, AI can easily solve for the set of answers the researcher is looking for. These AI-driven simulations are already having an impact in the real world. And again, we need to look at the COVID pandemic to see how. In the summer of 2020, a group of Japanese scientists started building a deep neural network to model the spread of the virus throughout the world. They wound up training this network on the world's most powerful supercomputer, and the results were striking. The data they generated provided critical evidence that the virus was in fact airborne, and this wound up directly informing public policy. Researchers are continuing to find new applications for AI in the sciences every day, but it's still early. If you wanna hear more about the history of DeepMind, just watch this video next. Thanks a lot.